Hello, hello, and welcome to the Midnight Diary channel. My name's Gemma. I've got something a little bit different for you this week. Um, I've actually spent the last day and a half uh, travelling around Devon for my job with Search Press. Um, one of the directors came down to visit, and we spent a happy day or two yomping about around Dartmoor and seeing all our lovely clients there. So I've not actually had time to record a normal podcast video for you this week. So what I thought as we were spending the day driving through the most glorious scenery through the top of Dartmoor is that it was high time I shared with you uh, when my friend Lee came to visit and I vlogged some of our trip. She came for three days back at the beginning of March and I took her to some of my favourite places um, round and about. We did a bit of a tour of yarn shops and fabric shops. Lee's a very keen sewist. We went up to Dartmoor to see the Dartmoor ponies um, and uh, yeah, we generally just had a wonderful time um, kind of being tourists, I guess, in this wonderful new home county to me of Devon. So I hope you enjoy the video I've got for you and I will be back next week with a regular podcast episode. There will be finished objects galore, one or two cheeky new acquisitions uh, from some of these stores that I'm sharing with you and lots of it and an update on the 100 Days project. So sit back, relax, enjoy and welcome to Devon. Our first stop was Purple Valley Wool Shop in Paynton. This was on Lee's must-see list. She's a girl who does her research beforehand. Um, and they are actually a client of mine. It's my third or fourth visit to them at this point. They are my local yarn shop now. They've got the most fantastic selection of buttons, which Robin was quite taken with. Um, it was really good we managed to get in when Lee visited because they were actually in the process of winding down the fabric side of their business and they're only doing now, say only, they've got a fantastic offering, all yarn um, and focusing on the knitting and crochet rather than sewing. And something just so pleasing about reels of ribbon and tubes of buttons, all the fripperies and finishings that help you make a project truly special. As you can see, they have the most fantastic range of cotton, uh, mostly quilting cotton. Both Lee and I made purchases here. Um, I've not yet decided what I'm going to make with mine. Since I've started, since I've moved to Devon, and since I've started my wet search press, and obviously I'm going to more fabric shops, I'm building quite the fabric stash. But as yet, I'm not brave enough to dive in and start sewing but there's just something about the possibility that is so so exciting. I have developed this entire room dedicated to craft books. Wow what a selection. If you want a one-stop opportunity to see lots of books Purple Valley is definitely a good stop. It's an That's a dog in a hat. That's drawn to the brown. I think it might end up being the brown. Thank you, Robin. Why are you choosing a colour for your sweater then? Because I haven't spent enough money here yet today, clearly. It keeps going for the brown, doesn't it? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I could probably tolerate the dark grey, but I'm definitely not doing black. Right. Once we headed to the Old Way Mansion, which was the old family home of the Singer family of the Singer Sewing Machines. Splish, splash, splosh. You'll soon need a... No. <laughs> I went up to his face, I think. I got too close. <laughs> Immersive. I see what you did there. I took Lee up to Haytor, one of my absolute favourite places on the moor, very close to us, and where, if you're lucky, you will see some Dartmoor ponies. Now, these are semi feral animals. They are technically owned, they're not completely wild, but they are allowed to free roam. But because of their free roaming, semi feral nature, they're not 100% used to humans. So it's always advisable not to actively go approaching them. However, as we got out of the car to walk around Haytor a little bit, um, some ponies approached us. Um, I wanted to show Lee Make Southwest, which is a beautiful, um, creative environment. It used to be known as the Devon Guild of Craftsmen. And they have fantastic initiatives, lots of workshops, lots of installations, celebrating local art, local artisans, an amazing shop with local produce um, or locally produced art as well. They're incredible. <gasps> They had the most fantastic exhibition when we were there. I mean, they always have fantastic exhibitions, but this one was all paper craft and the incredible things created from paper and cardboard were just outstanding. Utterly, utterly mind blowing. I hope you enjoy these few close ups of some of the art. I'll say. Look at these people made out of cardboard. Oh, it's made out of cardboard. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that amazing?
thread supplies, hand drawn and silk screen printed for 15 to 30 colours per side. Amazing. I so want to like just stretch it. Oh. That is, oh my goodness, it is so beautiful. You can see a blue butterfly. Oh, I didn't even notice. Look, I was looking down yeah, the dandelions. Yeah, I didn't I notice that. Wow. Wow. Guys. He's reaching up to the sky. It's a boy, Robin. It's a little boy. A bit bigger than you. I mean, it's all incredible, but look at the detail on that. That's amazing, isn't it? The abbreviates. Oh, so beautiful. And there's little butterflies. So incredible. It's, it's proper recycled so we've got everything. Amazing. Climate emergency kit was actually completely compostable and biodegradable at the end of it. Oh, uh, That's like the life. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's amazing. So it's stunning. Yeah. How are you? All right, thank you. Good, good. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm wanting to get here for donkeys. <laughs> I'm finally here. You're welcome. <laughs> I was like, that was my idea. We need to go to all the yarn shops. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Jude. Uncle Jude. Now, Uncle Jude isn't here, sweetheart. I know we were talking about him, but I was very proud of my son for being a good little yarny. Imagine my horror then when he decided to buy me a ball of yarn by chewing it. That's local yarn, TQ Chip 7. That's beautiful. Isn't it? And it's undyed. Oops. As is that. Worsted four ply weight. So it must be worsted yeah. spun, natural fleece colour, knits as four ply. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> West Geo Farm with Ridge Tiverton, Devon. Wow. How amazing is that? Yeah. My camera's not picking up the colours properly, which is a shame. I'm really intrigued by this stuff. Yeah. I know it's it is acrylic, but it is just so beautiful.
top. At long last, we returned home and had to get Lee's absolute must eat treat proper dev and fish and chips. Now we had to go to two different fish and chip shops because Lee was very keen to try the battered fish uh, chips which to be honest I would quite happily leave but when in Rome <laughs> and so we got the battered chips from one chip shop and we got normal chips from the other chip shop however the other chip shop happened to have battered Mars bars and Lee declared uh, it was time for a science experiment. That looks so wrong. It does look really wrong, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> it does look really wrong, doesn't it? Yeah, we're looking at it on the inside. Isn't it? <laughs> this is definitely going on the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> you're 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 squeezing out your bottom. <laughs> your bottom's like there's there's goop coming out the bottom. Yeah, there is. <laughs> That's so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have it again? Are you like me? You kind of feel like you need to have it again just to be sure. Yeah. I think I would have it again. I don't want any more now, though. But well, I think I would right. Have it again. Okay. It's quite nice. Yeah. Uh, going in for another bite. See the the goop. Ah, it's not focusing on the goop. It's quite goopy. It's very very peculiar. I can't feel myself eating this. It feels wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Glamorous. Concentration. <laughs> oh, my head is stuck. There we go. We're okay. There we go, last ones. Oh, I like this bendy tip needle. Do you? I yeah. can't like how if I do like it. There we go. Empty needles. We're down to 23 works in progress. <laughs> Right. Oh, I'm wearing a scrunchie. I'm not going to be able to put it on. Oh, I will, but I'll look ridiculous. Oh, right. it's okay. No, no one cares. Right, okay. Don't forget to weave, weave in the end. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you look fabulous. So the 7th of March I was able to take Lee to some of my favourite beauty spots and to Babuka Model Village. We made this a bit of a family trip because Robin absolutely loves it here as well. It was so lovely and surreal to be able to show my friend the spot where I have stood for so many years looking out over the sea and to show her the unique beauty of this wonderful place. Babacan Model Village has been going for years. Um, the owners actually had model villages in other places before, though now I forget where because it's two months since our visit <laughs> that I'm editing this. But it has a whole team of gardeners working around the clock to keep it in tip-top condition. And the insides are mm, a relatively closely guarded secret. They do absolutely love a pun or two. This is the EastEnders set. And everywhere you look, there is punnery. Hopefully you'll spot some in some of the pictures that I've assembled for you here. The scenes are absolutely magical and whimsical and it is a fantastic day out for the family. To be fair, you could spend a whole day here easily, but we satisfied ourselves with just a couple of hours. It's utterly amazing. They also have regular challenges, so at the moment they had a bug spotting challenge. They give you a little leaflet when you go in with a 
about 10 different insects that you have to spot that have been planted around the model village. There are also some regulars, such as Where's Wally? And see if you can spot Wally, Waldo, the wizard, Wilma, the dog, in this little tour. into the local butchers, Leah decided she wanted to try some proper Devonshire steak and having looked into the restaurants and decided we didn't want to remortgage our house as delicious as it would have been, the steak not remortgaging the house, we decided to make our own steak dish. So we popped into the local butchers, bought a fantastic piece of beef, got some advice as to how to cook it and had a veritable feast. Now. We were determined to pack as much in as possible to this and so we're going to wind it up with a little bit of yarn dyeing for you. And now we've come to the final day of Lee's stay. Um, we discovered that actually some of the shops on her to wish wish to see list were actually in Bubby Tracy. So we headed back there first of all before moving on to Creative Crafts and Needlework in Totnes. We had a fantastic lunch at Naomi's recommendation. I spent far too much money on a sewing project, which I will share with you in next week's podcast. I'm going to be sewing a pair of summer pyjamas for my son. Now, if you've seen me with a sewing machine, you'll know that my skills are... What I lack in skill, I make up for in enthusiasm, shall we say. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you and sharing that project next time. But for now, just enjoy a quick whistle-stop tour of some fantastic shops in Buffy Tracy. So we go to um, Stitch Tassel Pom. Uh, I've probably got that name completely wrong. We go to a fantastic uh, fabric shop, Serendipity. And uh, yeah, finish up at Creative Crafts and Needlework in Totnes.
Well, it's 10 o'clock at night and I've just finished editing the vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I must admit, my focus really wasn't on vlogging, but actually on enjoying the time I had with Lee. Um, it's fantastic to see a friend. And I haven't shown much of Totnes and Creative Crafts and Needlework because I have footage from another vlog that I'm going to be sharing with you going forward. And I'm going to be putting it in with my project of sewing the pyjamas. All too soon it was time to say goodbye and I took Lee up to Exeter. We did finish up at Wool on the X. Um, the reason being her train changed at Exeter. So I said, well, I'll just take you there. That's fine. So we did squeeze in Wool on the X as well. And do be sure to check out the Yarn Shop Tour video on my playlist from last November where I do a proper tour of Wool on the X, which is a fantastic shop that I'm lucky enough to teach at. So I hope you've enjoyed spending some time with me this evening. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week for a more regular podcast episode. Take care. Bye.